obsession is the word that comes up when I think of Exter. Exter is the sickest brand for people that like to live life on the go. You should check them out at exter.com because they have things like the wallet, the parliament wallet. They have the six card holder wallet as well. Premium leather. So sick. I think of them as a sophisticated brand, so yeah. proper. And then the card holder is also one of my favorites because it holds my daily cards. And on the back, you can fit one of their trackers in there, so you'll never lose it. If you do, you know exactly where it is. Find that guy. Go ahead and check them out. I think they make the perfect gift for any spouse, husband, grandfather, really anyone. Anyone that likes accessories. They also have cool things like the duffel bag. They also have the grid backpack that fills all, all it gets filled with all kinds of electronics. Mm-hmm. Um, your laptop, pretty much anything, any any gear of any sort. Yeah, use code 2AM for uh, for some savings there. Support yes. the podcast as well. Yes, please. Next up, one of my favorites, Butcher Box. Butcher Box. I think we all understand the importance of high quality meat. Oh, we do. Whether it's salmon, beef, chicken, um, I, th- I think it's one of the best companies out there, especially considering that they just send a box full of high quality meat to your door. Oh, yeah. And the display. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So get yourself some protein, high quality protein. Use code 2AM podcast in all caps for some savings and uh, some free meat with every box for a year as well. Cool. Also, if you like to eat meat, I'm pretty sure you're a coffee drinker as well. Mm. And if you haven't heard, Rare Bird is the new and up-and-coming brand, pretty much, that we run to when it comes to coffee. The reason why we use it is because it is a paraxanthine coffee. I mean, they do have normal coffee, but paraxanthine is basically the metabolite of caffeine, meaning that you don't get the crazy jitters, you don't have the, uh, the unfortunate staying up all night effect. Crawling out of your skin? Yeah. It's a common symptom for people. That's pretty nasty. So go ahead and avoid that and start drinking Rare Bird today. Use code 2AM and visit rarebird.coffee to get that. Oh, yeah, baby. Mm. Welcome to another exhausting episode here at the 2AM headquarters. Basically this tiny-ass studio. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we are truly exhausted. Dude, uh, I mean, tomorrow's Ramadan, so that's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to that. It's a pretty wise month, as I like to call it. Mm-hmm. You don't know what human you'll turn into at the end of it, but it's pretty cool. It's a nice little journey. No eating for 30 days from sunrise to sunset. And yes, that includes water. I know. Crazy, right? It's rough, but you know you get a lot of health benefits out of it. Yeah. I mean, your primary focus during that month is literally optimization for your body to get you able to survive the next day. So that means hydration, if you need to supplement, um, protein intake, whatever, all that, you know, and you need to cut the bullshit. So did you uh, see Abud's post? Uh, The one about like the the guide Mm -hmm. on to how to do Ramadan correctly. Well, that's that's a fantastic one. Not the religious, religious aspect, but like to optimize your body, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a fantastic, like, just overall guide for anyone who um, is going to be doing Ramadan. But I'm referring to a, actually a study. Mm. It was the first study of its kind on the the Ramadan-type fasting. Okay. Like, the the way it's approached, no water, no food. And across the board, you just see overall health improvements mm-hmm. from body composition to blood work. It's pretty incredible, so it's nice to see some science to also back it up. Of course, yeah. Yeah. I think fasting as a whole is pretty cool. Um. Do you think someone could get obsessed with it? <laughs> Speaking of obsession. No, no, no. Do you think <laughs> someone could get obsessed with fasting? Oh, know, of course. Yeah. I know you were for a while. No, people can take it too far. It, what, what people don't <laughs> think about is that fasting is a stressor on the body. 900 day fast. <laughs> Live streamed. Basically turn so, into an atom. <laughs> that today. <laughs> turn into a mitochondria. <laughs> What the hell is this, bro? You fasted so long, you got rid of cancer and gained it back. That's <laughs> full 360. Yeah, we're not making fun of cancer, but I think that was a funny joke. Um, yeah. We're going to be very lucid in this episode. It's going to it's gonna be impressive, honestly, to say the least. Yeah, but let's get into this. I mean, uh, the whole obsession thing, we, we were having a discussion prior yeah. to uh, hitting the record button. Yeah. What is your whole idea around it? That you were talking to me about? 
Um, <laughs> we honestly had a disagreement. Uh, what did we bring up? Okay, so I was out here, right, just setting up, doing my thing to get this uh, episode going, pretty much. And then Zade goes up, and he says, yo, do you have a Zin? I'm like, yeah. So then I hand him one. And he's like, you know what, dude? I think I'm going to do the the whole buy one can a month thing. Because I know myself and I have an obsessive personality. To which I replied, <laughs> I don't think there is a type of personality where you are obsessive. You know, I think that obsession comes in within your line. Right? Like what things mean to you. Like there's like, how do I even explain this? You can define your life on a on a on a line right and then there's certain things that you could be obsessed about that maybe i might not relate mm-hmm. but i also have my own obsessions that you might not relate to right yeah and to some people it could be health health wellness fitness right you're obsessed with that kind of stuff so let's just say like you actually look forward to your bcaa like you find flavor in it you know and you can't live a day without it like <laughs> you're like, bro, like, I can't wait to get these amino acids in me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you feel some type of way about it, you know? Yeah. Um, which I think is using part of your senses to kind of just like hover over it. Like th- like your life is less meaningful if you don't have it, you know? Which is – which to what you said, I, I basically said, well, I don't expect you to be obsessed with cameras, for example, right? Which kind of had you like thinking like, hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a really good point because – First of all, I do believe that there are personalities that are obsessive for the most part. Mm-hmm. Like you're not going to become obsessed with every single thing that you do yeah. or think about. But in general, if you look at somebody such as myself, in all in a lot of things that I do, I'm just obsessive. Yeah. Like I work 24-7. As, mm-hmm. Like any free time I have, I work. I'm obsessed with certain things within the health and wellness area. With any... I only consume caffeine and nicotine mm. for the most part. In general, my my use of those compounds have, has been obsessive. Yeah. So but, there, there are some people who focus <laughs> on like one thing and they are okay. actually obsessed with it. I think in general you can say that. Okay. I remember. I, know, I remember now. My argument was that you're basically like – it was to your zin. I responded to your zin thing and I said, well – I feel like a lot of us, or not a lot of us, like because this is within myself too, is that I'd rather have control of things than things control me, right? Which is why, like, I try to stay away from obsession when it comes to substance or whatever. Which is why I quit things like vaping, smoking, that kind of stuff, right? I've like, I'm like, dude, I've used my lungs way too much for stuff that I don't need, right? And then I'm like, remember what I responded to? I was like, then it's, I think it's just a calling to to tell yourself not to be that, that part of you, not to be a little bit, like there's still a hint of you're a little bitch, you know, in there. Like you're too identified with it. Yeah. You're too identified with it. And it's like, um, I think it takes more, maybe work on your discipline more in, in that regard. So it's like, why does the can of Zen control you? Like, why, why does it make you obsessed with it? You know what I mean? Can you just, can't you just like turn your, turn your brain the other way, like the dial, just be like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good, you know, or whatever. Well, he, here's the interesting part of that. <laughs> I think there are, there's a spectrum of obsessions. Mm-hmm. So with the Zen, it's actually almost effortless for me to cut out. Like before, before the, the, the pouch that you gave me, mm-hmm. I was on like 13 days of no Zins. Yeah. So do you have like a, it doesn't control you visually? Like you know it's there, so it's like you'll, you'll just run through it? Yeah. Like the idea of having one zin yeah. in the whole day mm-hmm. is foreign to me. Dang. Do you remember my uh, our episode on uh, how to stop vaping? Our what most I, popular episode yeah. on mm-hmm. audio, by the way. Remember how I was mentioning that the way I did it was I knew it was there. But that's the part I worked on. It's like don't reach for it as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Because you're telling, you're like referencing to your brain that this is a, habitual thing this is a leave it there just in case but go as long as you can it's kind of like fasting 
Go as long as you can without reaching for it or taking a hit or whatever. But also recognize that anxiety fear of I want to hit it and it's there. Mm -hmm. But what's keeping me from attaching to it right now is myself. Yeah. And I was, I was like, that's the control. That's mm -hmm. why I'm like, I want to practice that discipline, like, like a muscle, you know, where it's like, I'm going to shut everything out. I don't care if it's right here. I don't care if it's in my hand. I'm not going to hit it. Well, know? dude, remember what Abu talked How about. How hard is that? Remember what Abu talked about yeah. on, on our previous episode with him, the forebrain. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what he was talking about. Yeah. When it comes to training or doing anything, you're basically overriding your subconscious mm -hmm. or your desires and bringing your conscious to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And then you, you train your forebrain. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Like people that go to the gym for a little bit and then quit and go to the gym for a little bit and then quit. The best advice that I've heard was just get used to going. Like, just arriving at the gym, just go inside, mm -hmm. right? Slowly start upping that. So, like, after um, after just getting used to going to the gym and then you just hit the sauna, you didn't really do any exercise or any lifting or any training. You just simply went from point A to point B. You went to the gym, right? Mm -hmm. And then a couple weeks later, once you start to feel like you're giving up, recognize that you're giving up and then hit the treadmill. It's a little bit more work, right? Yeah. And now do that consistently. And now you've trained yourself to do two things. Don't miss out on going to the gym. So you're driving there physically or walking there, whatever. And you're hitting the treadmill. Right? Now, when you hit the treadmill, do 20 minutes. Next time in a couple of weeks. Like, just get used to doing 20 minutes all the time. Yeah, it's just building, in the, yeah. building that forebrain you're, you're, muscle. You're, you're building that. That's exactly what I'm saying. But the, the part that pissed me off about, like, <laughs> quitting, like, legit... Is that you know you're not you're not a dumbass you're not an idiot right? But having it there and refusing to do anything about it, like hit it or whatever, or just committing, you're you're. It's almost like you're becoming resilient to picking things up and just like doing it just because. What would you say to? I mean, the whole concept of willpower, this idea that as the day goes on, you have decision fatigue. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that you run out of willpower is something that's very popular. So yeah. do you think you can constantly fight yourself throughout the day? Even if it's just a little bit of a nag, like, oh, I could have one. Yeah. Why don't I have one? I, I could. Because I've seen the other side. Yeah. Where the human body is amazing at adapting, right? You've just adapted to that style of thinking, of um, reliability, on things like substance, you know? Mm -hmm. Why can't you look at substance as not substance anymore? Like, it's just like, um, like celery, you know? <laughs> I, I rarely have celery, but when I do, I enjoy it. Yeah. But I don't think to go to Whole Foods, pick up some celery, dip it in ranch, <laughs> and eat it, you know what I mean? I do agree with you. I think it's completely possible. Yeah. So, like, I'm not trying to discount 100%. that. 100%. But going back to like the, the spectrum of obsessions. Obsessions. What if I were to tell you to never, mm. to never think about cinema, cinematography ever again? There is 0% chance that that is happening no, for no. you. 0%? 0%. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not going to not think about it. But I go on long runs of not touching cameras. Do you actually? Yeah. Because like, with health, I don't experience any of that, dude. To anyone that's been listening to us forever, like, I really mean balance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I naturally go through phases because I, I think my obsession is actually thinking about all these obsessions. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's, it's like, um, I'm very self-conscious about my habits all the time. Like, I, I judge them. You know what I mean? Like, I go, is this correct? Like, you know, what, do I have anything that I'm currently obsessed with? Do I need to tile it, don't it uh, tone it down? I don't know. But th then I, th then I realize that's another obsession. <laughs> it's just thinking about it, you know? I don't know how, you, I don't know how you can step away from cameras, to be honest. Because I, w I always had this idea in, your, in, at least in my mind. Yeah. That it was like, yeah, you'll see it. You'll see it like on my phone. You, I'll go through like, I'll go through like, I'll just scroll up on my photos album. And then you'll see like, there was a period where I was like taking like photos by the minute, bro. You know what I mean? 
every single day, months on end, right? And all of a sudden, like, there's a dead cap from, like, November through January. Hmm. Like, three photos. One is my cat. The other one's like... It's like... You know what I mean? That's interesting. I don't know if I could do that with health. I l- because, like, it, it it is such... It has so much gravity to it. Mm-hmm. And it's not something that I just con- consciously choose to do. Yeah. It's something that I gravitate towards naturally. Well, to my... Remember my argument earlier. I said... Um, if that's the case, then everyone is, obs- is has an obsession. Yeah, like I think an everyone obsessive has personality. One. You know, well, I don't think everyone has an obsessive personality. So again, that's where I differ. Why? Because in general, if you look at certain people, they they tend to be obsessed with more things than other people. Mm-hmm. Like most of the population, let's say, has one obsession. Mm-hmm. Somebody who truly has an obsessive personality has ten. If they get into something, they're more likely to be obsessed. Mm-hmm. So that's where I kind of But differ. that thing has to philosophically line up with who they are. You know what I mean? It does. But that's what I'm saying. So take this back. Even the obsession, <laughs> like let's just say someone that doesn't do any uh, physical obsession stuff, right? They can have the obsession of judging people in their head. They can have the obsession of thinking about random things like, like how self-conscious they are or whatever. Or thinking about their death. I don't know. Like whatever. But it could be in their head. That's what I'm saying. Thinking can also be an obsession, which makes – does that make us all – I think that that's the question is that I'm, I'm, I'm going towards – I think obsession – I think everyone has an obsessive personality in that sense. But it's just indifferent genres. You know what? That makes sense to me. I think you've convinced me actually. See? I think see, you've convinced in me In genres, actually. bro, there's things we can't see. Like, Yeah. Because like if I think about it, I'm never going to become <laughs> obsessed with math. Like, I just don't give a shit. I've convinced him. <laughs> yes. There are things that I'm more likely to be obsessed with. Like, if I wanted to take up Italian as a new language, yeah, I can very easily become obsessed, obsessed with Duolingo because I see the value in that. Yeah. But like, math or something else that I don't really care about, I mean. There you go. Like, for, <laughs> for right go. now. For right now, for example. Okay? Yeah. I took a little bit of a vacation from, like, Photography and instead of photographing everything, I only photograph like certain moments that I like either see or it calls to me or whatever. But now I've been obsessed with um, improving myself, my education, my um, my experiences, just widen my knowledge. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like that's another. That's why I think we're all technically um, obsessive. It's because of that. It's because we're always looking for, like, how can I better myself? Yeah. You know, which I hope, honestly. That's how you um, become a better human and a, and a just a more um, achieving type of person, you know? You always want to do good things. Like, like who doesn't want to be successful? You know what I mean? In order to be successful, you got to achieve certain things. Mm-hmm. I will say you have convinced me, actually. There you go. So, might See? be the first time on the pot. Oh my God! Yeah, I mean it's a, it just makes sense. It uh, yeah, it does. It really does. And uh, like I said, I could be obsessed about the things we call obsessions, like watching movies, or I love TV shows, or I love uh, archery, right? And then you can t- completely take a break, and you'd be obsessed with like bettering yourself and health and this and that. Mm-hmm. So it's like. Some people are defined by like, oh, they're just like obsessed with Star Wars. And I think that's like that's like a really good example. Yeah. Because you'll see that. It's like fandom. And they'll go every single year for the rest of their lives cosplaying and like doing all this crap when the movies were made <laughs> a million years ago. A you know? million. A million light years yeah. ago. <laughs> but it's just like they're obsessed with this like mythical world of mm. uh, Star Wars. We don't have to understand it, but, like, we can clearly see there's an obsession here, right? Yeah. But I think we, we call obsession just that thing that you just see, when in reality it could be anything. It could be, like, um, just a a personality, I guess. I don't know. Well, there you go, guys. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah. I, I like that subject. Pretty sick, huh? I have one myself. What is it? Uh, shout out to Guru Anaerobic on Guru Twitter. Guru Anaerobic? Amazing account. Okay. I mean, this guy is, like... In his 50s, jacked. Sick. He can do what most 20-year-olds today can't do. You hear that? I don't know if this is from his book. I know, I think he has a couple of e-books, but 
This is called self-checkout. Okay, nice. Self-checkouts are IQ tests. Look at the average person, unable to identify when a checkout is free and unable to scan and pack their three items in under five minutes. Mm. Their brains are working at one-tenth speed. Steer clear of these people and all of their friends. If you don't, something bad will happen to you. A random event which they are responsible for without realizing will end up with your decapitation or worse. You need to protect yourself from people who fail the self-checkout test. That is 50% of humanity minimum. Damn. And what came to mind is that this is 100% true. Mm -hmm. If you go to any store and there's self-checkout, you know, aisles open, Mm -hmm. most of the people will actually wait in line. Oh, yeah. Even if they have like four or five things. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've seen otherwise, let me know. But So you're saying like if there's a longer line in self-checkout and then there's shorter lines and just like the person helping you, people would rather stand in line for self-checkout? I've actually seen that. Yeah, I've seen that too. Time and time again. I've seen that at Walmart all the time. Granted, they they mostly have self checkout now, but yeah, it was just crazy to me because I, I do think it is actually an IQ test or at least an awareness test. Mm. I prefer. I mean, this is my personality. I prefer, um, like knocking on the door of question marks and being like, "Oh, let's see what this engagement's about." So, like, I'll just, I'd like for someone to help me just so we can have a good conversation. Mm. Sometimes they're not willing to. Like, I'd be like, "Hey, how's it going?" They're like, "Good." Deep. Deep. You know, like they beep. Don't, they don't care. But there's other people that are like, oh my God. Ye- that's a lot of cat food. What's going on? I'm like, oh, I'm buying for the month. They're like, ah, ha, ha, that's what I figured, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then she'll scan something else and be like, oh, are these good? I'm, I'm thinking about picking these up. Have you tried them? I'm like, yeah, I've tried them. I get them all the time. Oh, dang. Oh my God. My daughter's going to love these. Like, ah, ha, ha. You know, like it's a good inter- interaction. But I look mm-hmm. forward to that kind of stuff. So yeah, like, it's always cool. So like, screw self checkout. You know, I already checked myself out enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but but that's like so it is an IQ test form. It, what's more interesting to me about this is just, I mean, this one line: their brains are working at one tenth speed. Like, wh- in my opinion, I really do think that most of the people I come across are extremely slow in what they do. Like, there's no sense of urgency, or at the very least, they're not even like maintaining normal speed. Mm. They don't think of like when when. A, when a dude walks into a grocery store, spends 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. But when I walk into a, a grocery store, I want to get in and out as quickly as possible. You're like, boop, boop, Yeah, like I don't want to spend time in the grocery store. Yeah. No, I get that. I get that when it's like midday. If I'm taking the time off to go shop or do something like that, yeah, sure, I'll take uh, my time. Even if I took my time, it would be at less than an hour. Well, I guarantee you, you're really? not spending an hour at the grocery store, bro. No. no, no, I know some people that go to, like, Abercrombie, and they'll sit there for, like, an hour and a half, like, trying things. I'm like, dude, come on, bro. You don't know your size. You don't know this, you know? Just, yeah. Just, you can kind of, you, you know, you usually walk into a place knowing what you need and what you want, you know? But but then again, I'm trying to poke holes in my yeah. idea here, because if I, like, in Southern California, if you're on the road, there's a lot of people who drive fast. Mm-hmm. I think in general, the, the the pace on the road is just faster yeah. than most other places. Well, I don't know. Is that, a, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's the same thing. Like, it's not. I don't think it's either. To Bro, be they're saving two minutes, one minute. Like It can be a bad thing. Shit. I'd rather just be chilling, you know? I look at it as, as a time for me to enjoy my music and just mm-hmm. kick back. You know, driving's already a pain, so. Yeah. In this state, bro, long roads. Um, hmm, interesting. Hmm. IQ tests. Huh? Very interesting. But people are slower these days. Um, I think one thing I thought of was when I used to cashier, uh, I would think about like, like multiplying the, the, the amount of customers, you know? Okay. So like if I get three people that have like two items and then there's three people coming up next with like two shopping carts full of stuff. Um, how fast do I need to work for it to make, t- to, for me to make the line seem like it's moving quick mm. and not take up everybody's time? You know what I mean? Like, I think that's a sense of urgency, which you brought up, where you start to think about that, you know? Or efficiency, which is basically the same thing, I guess. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking about the, the customer shopping experience, which I, sh- 
I don't know, to some people probably that's stupid. Like, who cares about the customer, you know? But to me, it's like, that's kind of how it is. Like, why don't we make their time pleasant? I don't know what the, I don't know who the hell they are. They could be an H&R lady. Yeah. Uh, or H&R block guy or whatever, you know? Who knows what their life is like? Maybe they're working fucking seven days a week and then they finally have their day off. Let me just make it pleasant, you know? Why do yeah. I have to make it difficult and long? And Is there a way for me to make it easier? That's, that's how I think. But I think I know what you're talking about. It's like you, you come across a lot of these workers or shoppers or whatever where they're just taking their sweet ass time. And then you're like, I thought Costco was quicker before. <laughs> what, what happened, dude? You know? I don't know. It's kind of like, um, I don't know. It's the dividing line between people who are like more aware Versus so, those who are more unconscious. Yeah, it seems like you're saying it's a humanity issue. Like, it's a humanity... Like, we're in the subconscious too much type of thing. Or we're not really... We're just too mindless, dude. We're in the zone now where it's like it's me and my family only. You know? Like, it's all I care about. And we obviously saw that after COVID. Or during COVID. Yeah. I mean, that's really what did it in, but yeah, I think it is just a human nature thing. Crazy. Different personalities. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought of the difference between a road, street, avenue, like the hell they are? People ask me that all the time. A road, a street, and an avenue? Yeah, like if you see like um, Lambert Road or um, Imperial Highway or Lance Street, like aren't they all, people go, oh, aren't they all roads? Like what? What may, what differentiates a road from an avenue? I th- I think a road is just one road leading to one destination for the most part. Yeah. Like if you're in a small town, mm-hmm. a street. What makes it a lane? You know what I'm saying? Like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? what makes it an avenue? See, because you have multiple avenues to travel. Yeah, I had someone ask me that, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not too sure, but I can kind of visually explain it. But it's like, what is? That's the a good real point. Definition? You can visually explain it, but you can't. Yeah, yeah. really like verbally. A road explain it. to me just makes sense. It's just a stretch of road that most likely doesn't have turns. Like you know, when you're going to Joshua Tree, it's just straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is a road, in my opinion. So we got the definitions here. <laughs> All right. So for anyone that's wondering, just like I was, and most other people that I know of. A road is anything that links two points, the most basic of public ways. There are many types of roads as described. Huh. And these descriptions are pretty much like a long stretch of road. I get like the ground is road, you know? But we're talking about like, I don't know, Culver Road. Okay. For example. (laughs) All right. And then we have a street. A street is, visually speaking, where buses stop. So if you can visualize bus stops on the street you're driving on, that's that's a street. So a public road that connects two points but also has buildings on both sides of it, these typically run perpendicular to avenues. Mm. I can see that. Mm -hmm. So which gives me the conclusion of an avenue is probably like an entrance to a neighborhood. You know I'm not saying? sure I couldn't give you an a- answer, but okay. I would assume so. <laughs> a public way, so an avenue is a public way that also has buildings and or trees on both sides. These run perpendicular to streets and are traditionally wider. Where do these words come from? Uh, that's a good question. Like, did the Romans come up with these these words? I don't know. I mean, surely. I'll look that up next. But then we have boulevard. <laughs> oh, what the hell is a boulevard? A boulevard is a very wide street <laughs> with buildings and or trees on both sides, usually with a median in the middle of the lanes. Mm. So okay. think of our famous beach boulevard. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. You can see that. There's a median in the center the whole way, pretty much. So is it yeah. mainly referring to size? <laughs> I think it's size and what kind of layout. Location. Yeah, yeah, like what kind of layout is is on both sides. Yeah. So is it buildings, trees, houses, residential, you know, that kind of stuff. A lane. A lane is a, can you picture it? It's pretty self-explanatory. One lane? Yeah. Narrow street that may not have a median opposite of boulevard. (laughs) 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 
so we had Boulevard, which was a very wide street, and then we have a lane, which is just a lane. You know. Is that it? So Boulevard, Avenue, Road. No, we still have Drive. Oh, Drive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. A Drive is a, see, remember what I said, long stretch of road, usually doesn't have turns. A Drive is a long winding road, often shaped by its surroundings. So it could be positioned to weave along a lake, mountain, or even around a country club golf course. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know why, but it feels helpful to know. <laughs> it does. Yeah. You know that moment when you say a, a word so many times? Mm-hmm. Like road. Yeah. Road. 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 Kind of fucks your mind up. Oh my God. It's Queen Road. Like you, you almost see the absurdity of language. <laughs> yeah. Like, who came up with this vowel yeah. in this specific way? The word that trips me out the most is spoon. <laughs> you want a spoon? And it's like, can you imagine you're chilling in a cave? Unga, bunga, unga, unga. Right? Spoon. And you're just like, oh, spoon. <laughs> <laughs> like, where does spoon come from, you know? Does it look like a spoon, you know? We don't know. No, see, that's that, interesting. This, and I get that quite often, too. Yeah. Anyway, we still have court. Oh, there's more. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. A You've never court, seen court? CT? Courtyard. Yeah. Court, road, or street that ends in a cul-de-sac or loop. Okay. So, no exit, I think. You exit the way you came in. Hmm. Uh, a way. Way is a small side street connected to a larger road, typically in a residential neighborhood. Hmm. Mm, makes a lot of sense right there. Um, now that you've harnessed with a great deal of navigational knowledge, you can fiend <laughs> an air of confidence, <sighs> finally. Even if you're just directionally challenged as before. That's what we like to call faking it until you make it. Wait, they call, they call people who don't know this stuff directionally challenged? <laughs> yeah. Like some people believe that they have no sense of direction. I've heard that. What does that so have to much. do with boulevard and road and lane and I have no clue, but I think it's just because it's through the directional whatever. You know? Like, okay, back in the day. You have to think like back in the day. Okay. All right. How did you give people directions? This is coming Usually from my peers. Back in the day or how far back in the day? Like when people printed out MapQuest papers of directions, word by word. Like there's no actual navigation unless you had a GPS system. You know? I mean, usually <laughs> by town or city or... Like, if someone said, okay, like, you know, you know that they are in San Bernardino, and you're trying to get them to come to Garden Grove, right, to this place called Furai Wings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck they would drive to San Bernardino, but <laughs> <laughs> it must be a birthday or something. Um, and then you told them, all right, um, hop on the 215... Okay, so you just two fifteen is going to take you to the ninety one west, and the ninety one west, you're going to exit the fifty five north, and you're going to take the fifty five north to the twenty two west, and then from there you're going to take exit Magnolia, all right, and then you're going to turn left, and then you're going to pass uh, In and Out. Once you pass In and Out, it's immediately on your left. You're going to turn left. That's Magnolia. You go straight for two miles or so. <laughs> Until you see a KFC, and then you turn right, you know? Isn't it funny that all of that shit went right. over my head? Yeah, exactly. And then once you hit two stop signs, you're going to find a Taco Bell. When you see the Taco Bell, it's going to be the next signal, <laughs> make a right. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. That's, that's, that's kind of how you it's give It's like, you know, I, I hung out with my grandparents, sisters, nephews, whatever. Yeah. It's confusing. So it's like that, but that's how people understood so it's like, oh, okay. So they'll start remembering those words. And it's like, okay, we, we passed the two stop signs, and then there's a Taco Bell. He said it's the second entrance. Okay, second entrance. Boom. Uh, look for his house number. Uh, 12486. Uh, one, two, oh, there it is. Okay. Make a U-turn. Park. That's it. Maybe we're all directionally challenged because of but the introduction of GPS and maps. Yeah. But while you're doing that, do you know what west, east, north, south is? Like, you still have to know that. Yeah, know? for the most part. I mean, how many people? <sighs> yeah. For some people, they go they go to a new place for the first time, right? Let's just say South Coast Plaza. And they're driving from Brea, let's just say. Okay. Uh, they printed directions for one way. 
But then once they get there, they spend time there and they had fun, whatever. And then they go to leave and they're like, when I exit, do I make a left or right? Where's <laughs> you know? Like, do you know where you are, technically? That's directional challenge. Right yeah. There. Like, I think... The yeah, I think I am directionally yeah, challenged. Something like that. Because I usually use landmarks. Yeah, can you get out of where you are without using GPS, pretty much? Even cross streets go over my head Yeah, a lot of times. I remember as a kid, my mom would drive me everywhere, and I would pay attention, to, like, exactly... Like, first of all, like, at young, young age, visually. Not street names or anything like that. And then I grew up a little bit, and then I was like, okay, now I'm paying attention to, like, we always are on Magnolia for some reason, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, where does Magnolia go? Oh, it turns out it goes to the beach. That's insane. Oh, and it goes all the way back down the other way, too, to the hills? Nice. Didn't know that. So, like, you start becoming, like, that's when you memorize uh, street names. Mm. And then as I got older and started driving, I'm like, I'm just familiar with all these. Like, I know which, on which side of Magnolia is going, um... West or east? Like I just yeah. know. I've had so much experience with it. Yeah. So then I just have uh, awareness. Same thing. I tested it really when I went to start going to L.A. And coming out of downtown, like, you just know. Like, okay, Olive Street left is going to take me to the 10. And then right is going to take me to uh, the 101. Great. Okay. That's it. Mm. You, you just start. Like, I didn't even know where the sense of direction comes from, but you just know. Like. It's almost like you have an internal map. Yeah, I think with the repetition and just exploring yeah. places, you just have that map in your head. Yeah. But it's cool. We learned something today. Try not using your GPS for yeah. once. <laughs> Next time you're on an avenue, just know. Damn. Yeah. I know what this is now. <laughs> <laughs> and if you enjoyed this episode, please go rate us five stars on Spotify. We would love it. Please do. You have no idea. And we, what we would love even more is if you supported the podcast by using any of our affiliate links in the description that we have. Um, use two, uh, code 2AM. And then for ButcherBox, use code 2AM PODCAST, all caps. Uh, more fun, more savings. We love it. We will catch you next time. Guys. We're going to go sleep. Yes. Bye.